My name is Ted Shulowitz. Um, Shulowitz is kind of a hard name to say, so most people just call me Ted from Red. Um, I work for Red Digital Cinema. My title is Leader of the Rebellion, uh, which is, um, I guess, a unique title in the industry. Uh, but it's not all that unique around Red. We have some pretty interesting titles, uh, including things like Madman, Problem Solver, Workflow Wizard. Uh, our HR department's called Population Control. You know, we got Mission Control, Covert Ops, so all those kind of that's kind of how we work. We, uh, uh, the company doesn't uh, work in a normal hierarchy. We just work as a, as a team. So everybody just kind of comes up with their own title depending on what they do. The uh, vision for the project and uh, the guy behind Red is a fellow named Jim Gennard who um, started a uh, company 30 years ago called Oakley and grew that into quite a big business um, doing the world's finest sunglasses, the world's finest optics for your eyes. And uh, Jim has always been a passionate uh, still photographer and uh, motion picture photographer as, as a really high-end hobby. And because he's done pretty well uh, uh, in the, uh, the business sense, he was able to pretty much buy every new tool and new toy that was out there. Um, very, very sophisticated in the, in the early curve of digital still photography um, and was very interested in that. Uh, also very interested in, in motion picture photography, uh, both film and electronic and um, always had a, a frustration with the product offerings that were on the market, regardless of the price point. Um, they worked like video cameras, and Jim was a, a film and digital still guy. And he would, what, what he really wanted to see come to life was a camera that worked and thought more like a film or a digital still camera, but could shoot motion pictures at ultra high resolution. So Jim found me um, from a, uh, a company that's pretty well known in the industry called AJA Video, which of course make the finest video cards and video interface devices in the world, bar none. And I was the Mac guy for them for many, many years, so sort of helped start that division and, and grow it. So I always had this very deep integration with the people at Apple. Um, Jim found me, we started working on the project, and then uh, two years ago, a little over two years ago at NAB, we launched the project publicly to the world uh, at NAB 2006 with a little more than a a plastic model and a metal model uh, and uh, some pretty bold uh, statements and, and uh, uh, logic about a, a 4K future that would be affordable, logical, and accessible for a lot of people. Uh, and a lot of people were highly skeptical. Um, I, uh, as the sort of eternal optimist, uh, wasn't highly skeptical. Uh, I just kept rolling right along and we started to build the team. At first it was just Jim and I. And then uh, we started to put together who we thought would be people that wouldn't be the traditional accepted norm for who you would hire to build a motion picture, electronic motion picture camera. Uh, we looked sort of in a different uh, domain. Uh, and we found some really creative people on both the software side and the hardware side. And slowly but surely, the team started to come together and the engineering started proper just a little over two years ago. And we built our own sensor with our own sensor team, with our own sensor knowledge and, and uh, all the electronics and the codec engine. And there are some really brilliant people that work on the team that uh, don't fit into the normal convention of who you might think would build a camera. And that's probably one of the reasons we're, we're successful in our early stages of actually bringing the camera to market and, and making it work. One day is never like the next. It's always something new and exciting around the next band, both on the engineering and development side and on sort of the, the public outreach side. Uh, so you know, my, my part of my job is kind of this, I like to joke, kind of unlikely press secretary of the organization because I can talk. You know? so, <laughs> Ted, you go talk. You know? We'll go build and you go talk. Um, so the, um, the, the, the overall experience of RED is, is it's, it's a bit insane. It's a, it's a bit of a madhouse and we're constantly reinventing and retooling and we never really rest on our laurels. That's really not how we created the dynamic of the company. The idea was to build a product, get it out to market. Um, I, I think that the, um, the, the objections and the skepticism of what the camera is have also sort of morphed with that logic over the last couple of years. The first year before it was really real other than in a lab somewhere and no one could see it, there was some pretty harsh skepticism. You know, you've, you've, got, there, you've got no way you can actually do this, and you're going to do it for 18 grand, and you're going to do it, you know. You're talking about really tearing apart the industry 
uh, in a very different kind of way, and we don't think you can do it. We're the trained professionals. We don't think you can do it. So that was sort of the common thread early on. Uh, then there were, there were some big sort of key moments in the history of the company. Nine months after we made our initial announcement, we, the real breakthrough moment was we demonstrated in a big trade show in Europe um, the, the prototype 4K sensor working and showing 24 frame material in 4K on a very, very large screen, 65, 70 foot screen. And a lot of the objections were silenced pretty quickly at that point. The camera wasn't finished yet. You know, it was the size of a kitchen table, and it was all kind of big Frankenstein kludge thing. But the basis of what we were doing was there, and the sensor was real, and it worked, and it made these glorious looking images that are still on our website today. You can still see some of the early stuff. Um, you know, incredible dynamic range, incredible way to hold the blacks and hold the whites and hold everything in between, and this amazing resolution that's way, way beyond HD. So as that started to evolve, you know, then the skepticism sort of changed a little bit. It, was, it started off as, they'll never do this. You're wasting your time, you're, you're wasting your money, don't believe the hype. Then, when we showed that the hype was somewhat real, they said, okay, well, maybe they can build this sensor and they can create these images in a lab environment, but they'll never build it into this little shell that's like the size of a football and they claim is going to weigh between 9 and 10 pounds. They just won't be able to do this. And trust me, they're never going to sell it for 18 grand. 17.5 is the list price, right? It's, it's going to be like 200K if they ever actually do it. So the skepticism sort of changed. They lost the chip of they'll never build the sensor because we showed them that. Didn't take all that long, because then it was just at NAB that year that we showed actual working cameras. Um, they worked. You could turn them on. You could turn them off. And then the other watershed moment is we had a, a director of some note make this little test film for us that um, showed what the camera could do in its prototype pre-release state. And this camera was nothing like the cameras that exist today, except that it was in the little body. Uh, so it was a little football, and it was 10 pounds and it shot the red code uh, raw technology. And Peter Jackson is the director I'm talking about, made this little 12 minute movie, this little war movie, when we thought he was just gonna shoot this test material of chest charts in people's faces in a studio. No, no, he took these two cameras, and they were the only two that worked in the whole world, and took them and put them into these harsh battle conditions. Handheld in the mud, and helicopters flying in the nose mount, steady cam, cranes, put this thing through a torture test. And at the end of a day and a half of shooting, he had a little movie. Three minutes, Sergeant Kitts. Ah! Stand to! Three minutes! Three minutes! Three minutes to go, boys! Stand to! Get the big spot in this! Back! Fight it! We were looking at the dailies as they come in, and we can't believe our eyes. We're like looking at this material, going, "This is the most amazing thing we've ever seen." The, the you know the high stakes drama of the whole thing was that we didn't actually see a finished, final, graded cut of the film in 4K until we were on the show floor at NAB, prepping to set up the projector and get all the 4K working. So if it didn't quite work out, we'd had some tap dancing to do. But the good news is it worked out. Tons of people came. They lined up for hours to see this thing. And then that was the next sort of change in the wind. So people then said, OK, well, it looks like maybe they have done it. They have working cameras now. They're talking about shipping them in the next few months. They have a notable director that actually took these things out and torture tested them. And at the end of the day, you know, it wasn't totally perfect at that point, obviously, and still not in, in some ways. The camera's still obviously this work in progress. Um, but it was all proven that, yes, we were going to do this. And then price point stayed exactly when we want, where we wanted it to stay, so we were able to keep it very accessible to a lot of people. Uh, and now today, so flash forward to, we're almost at the big NAB event, so this is almost a year later now. We have hundreds and hundreds of cameras shipped all over the world, people shooting insane amounts of stuff. Uh, and every day of my life is meeting with studios and meeting with directors and meeting with producers, getting ready to do a red job, just finished a red job, in some sort of fashion shooting red on everything from giant budget features to mid-level features to small indie features to big budget commercials, small budget commercials, music videos like crazy, only, you know, almost anything that you would think to shoot in 35 for the reasons that you want to achieve super high resolution imagery and dynamic range, people are now going to red. And that's 
in a little over two years.